Hi and welcome to another episode of Monday Market Outlook. Let's look into what the stock market has in store for us this week. So last week, most of the economic data that came in were pretty much in line with expectations, no? except for PPI, which came in at negative 1%, which is actually good news because that means that uh, inflation rate for next month might come in lower. No? As most of the economic data came in as expected, what everybody was still talking about was the Silicon Valley Bank hula baloo. Again, Silicon Valley Bank is in the front lines where the SVB Financial Group already filed for bankruptcy, right? So, But if you look at the headline, it says Silicon Valley Bank's former parent company has filed for bankruptcy protection. But then the 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 whole SVB financial group is composed of the banking business, the venture capital business, as well as the broker dealer securities business. But it it's actually only the the banking business that has filed for Chapter Eleven bankruptcy. So headlines like this simply adds to the one confusion and two fear. Next in line, we have Janet Yellen going viral on Twitter because of her statement about only saving banks that pose a systemic risk in the U.S. financial system. And of course, Credit Suisse also joined in the bandwagon. Remember, Credit Suisse already had problems even before the SVB collapse. So they're now uh, front and center in the headlines because it's still a developing story. But looking at the Philippine sectors, the financial sector is holding quite well. So looking at the Philippine Stock Exchange, we see the index hovering at around 6,420 level, right? And it closed at around 6,470. I think for the most part of next week, we might hover around 0.5 and 0.38 FIB zones. I would like to see the market do a small rally, right? Then go down to 0.68 to fill this gap where we can potentially find buyers to push the market back up. Let's look at some of the banking stocks. We have BDO, some gaps here that we might see being filled uh, the, in the coming weeks. We could potentially see BDO come down to fill this gap at 119 before resuming its upward trend. Right? Metrobank, I think is a, is a good zone to get into Metrobank. BPI, wait for BPI's reaction into this consolidation zone, right? UBP also. Right, wait for it's it's currently at around the 0.61 fib. This doji could be a good sign for a potential bounce back to 89. Uh, just a few stocks to consider. We have AC. Look for Ayala Corp's reaction along these lines as it might present a good buying opportunity. Again, as we said in our last episode, if you are buying a stock on this level. Are you buying on the high side or are you buying in the low side? It it is rare for Ayala Corp to stay below this line for a long period of time so if you're going to buy ayala corp in at these prices right the chances of it going down is less than the chances of it going up and again as as long-term investors buying companies at cheap prices really is not a bad idea we have jfc also as mentioned jfc might test its support level here at 216 and it did so it closed at around 223 now this capitulation here was more or less brought about by news of its 1.1 billion loss for closing down its full 24 business right but in its but if you look at the earnings call it it's it's already priced in right jfc already disclosed in their earnings that they're expecting higher operating cost especially a write-off of its full business so that news is already priced in sec also is this a good time to buy if you look at some of the insider trading that's happening with sec we have it's we have SEC's president and COO getting like 150,000 shares worth at 29.70. So 29.70 to 29.95 seems to be a good level for for SEC, right? Now, if you look at its dividend history, they they gave uh, they announced dividends on April. So we might potentially be looking at another dividend announcement pretty soon right now looking at arit it suffered like it suffered an eight percent drop in on thursday 
right at the close of uh, Thursday's session but bounced back on Friday, right? Now, if you look at the dividend payout for ARIT, uh, they were averaging 0.49 cents last year and they've increased their dividend to 52 cents, right? So that's a total of 2 pesos 8 cents this year from 1.96 last year so that represents a six percent increase in the dividend yield now this puts the dividend yield of a at 34 pesos now if you were able to buy a during its ipo at 27 the dividend yield is 7.7 .7, not to mention a 23.5 percent appreciation in in asset value because it's now at 34 is is a rate a buy at 34 now if you are comfortable getting 6.1 percent yield on your investment then yes it's a good buy right now you may want to wait for a, a rate to go down to 31 which would give you a higher yield so when you're buying REITs remember that it's not about the price but it's more or less about the yield is the yield acceptable to you just to give you a bit of trivia remember that as long-term investors right we are counting on being invested in the stock market for for a long period of time because the probability of earning a positive return on stocks right increases as you are as you stay invested the chance of you earning a positive return on stocks if you're invested only for one year, it's just 53%. In some ways, 53% is just like gambling, right? So you really want to be invested for the long term. If you're invested in the stock market for five years, the probability of positive return is 70%. And if you're invested for 10 years, then the probability of earning a positive return goes significantly up at 90%. And of course, if you've been investing in the stock market for at least 20 years, 100% you already made money. I recommend everyone to read this book, Psychology of Money. This really gives an insight on long-term investing and value investing and puts you into the right mindset for it. Going to the S&P 500, what do we have in store for us next week? We will have our Fed rate decision. All eyes will be on Jay Powell as he announces his uh, Fed rate hike for March, no, and everybody is expecting the Fed to raise interest by 25 basis points. We will also have uh, initial jobless claims numbers and new home sales numbers next week, right? But the most important thing here really is the Fed rate decision. If we look at what has happened recently with the Fed rate futures, right? So we are currently at 4.75, and we are expecting the Fed to hike rates at five percent this is the federal funds rate futures chart right though what what this means is basically the overall market sentiment on where the federal funds rate will be in the future right so the market is clearly indicating what the market is betting on is that the fed will pivot soon because what happened after last week, after the SVV bank collapse last week, the market feels that the continuing Fed rate hikes has already broken something. And this something is the financial sector, right? So they are already betting that the Fed will start to pivot soon. This is the current Fed funds rate, 4.75, and it's going to increase at 5%. And the market is betting that it's going to be 4.18% in the future. So this has been a long disconnect between the market expectations and the Fed, right? For the Fed, they've been very consistent in saying they will keep the Fed funds rate high for a long time. And they're not expecting to pivot soon. New developments in the market has prompted the belief that the Fed might soon realize that they have to pivot which is representative of this chart now let's look at the S&P 500 now the market closed at 3916 almost right into the 3900 critical level that we've identified here so let's look into the two hour charts just to get a sense of how the market moves right you can see here some form of accumulation before the market had a rally 
and then a distribution before the market went down. So we have some critical zones uh, defined here. We have 3,900, around 3,990. We have 4,070, and then we have 3,800. Currently, we are trending downwards, right? So if we look at the downtrend line, right, we can see that the the market may potentially test this resistance, right? So because we've already formed a higher low and then a higher high. So what we may potentially see is a move towards this resistance zone. Now, this is a confluence zone. We have critical zone here and the trend line resistance there. And then the market may move downwards here in the next critical level in the coming week. So it would be interesting to see how all of these news, the financial news and the Fed rate hike, which will happen on Thursday at 2 a.m. on Thursday, will affect the markets. No? So I hope you found this episode useful. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel. And as usual, good luck on your trades. Please manage your risk accordingly. And I'll see you again next week.